Afternoon. <clears throat> Welcome. We have signing today Josie McDaniel Burkett. Glad you're here, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Call on Lieutenant Colonel Norris Darden to lead us in prayer. Yes, sir. Colonel? Yes, sir. Let us pray. We pause today to remember all that we have been blessed with. We thank you for favor, for grace, for leadership, for us having a plan, and for you giving us the wisdom to execute. Bless those families that have been affected. Bless us as we continue to do those things that will give you glory and help those that are displaced. We love you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Weather report. John Quirello. Thank you, Governor. Hurricane Dorian continues to pass just off the South Carolina coast. Uh, maximum sustained winds were 110 miles an hour as of the last update from the National Hurricane Center. The center is passing about 35 miles east of Bulls Bay, which is in northern Charleston County. And the western eye wall, which is where the strongest winds are located, is passing just about 10 to 15 miles off the coast. Strong winds are being observed along the coast. Uh, some of the highest reported gusts so far include uh, there was a buoy five miles uh, east southeast of Fripp Island that reported a 92 mile an hour wind gust as that eye wall moved over it. Winyaw Bay had a gust to 86 miles an hour. Another buoy six miles off of Dewey's Island had an 81 mile an hour wind gust. And then back on land, uh, Charleston Harbor gust to 80 miles an hour. Charleston Airport 69 miles an hour. And Hilton Head Airport 67 miles an hour. As Dorian lifts north, northeast through this afternoon, we expect to continue to see wind gusts from 75 to 90 miles per hour along the immediate coast of Georgetown and Horry counties. Winds will diminish from south to north later today into tonight. The threat for life-threatening storm surge continues along the Georgetown and Horry county coasts. Reports indicate water has been steadily rising in areas such as Polly's Island, Litchfield, Georgetown, and Myrtle Beach, and salt water inundation due to the storm surge will be worsening early this afternoon with the high tide. Storm surge could reach up to four to eight feet of inundation above ground level. So that's water above ground level on normally dry land uh, in some of the coastal locations of Georgetown and Horry counties. Significant rainfall has uh, already fallen as well. So far, we've seen amounts as high as 9.91 inches in Pawleys Island, 9.51 inches in Conway, <coughs> 8.11 inches in North Myrtle Beach, and then we've seen anywhere from about six and a half to seven and a half inches of rain uh, down in the Charleston and Mount Pleasant areas. Storm total rainfall is expected to reach seven to 15 inches, highest in Horry, Georgetown, and Charleston counties. And this amount of rainfall could result in significant flash flooding. The Waccamaw River at, at Conway is expected to rise and crest at major flood level now given these higher rainfall totals. Uh, the forecast crest is 15.5 uh, feet late Friday night into early Saturday morning. The river will remain around 14 feet, which is still a major flood, uh, for the next week to 10 days. And finally, at least two tornadoes were confirmed so far by the National Weather Service one in North Myrtle Beach and the other in Little River with one of the outer bands that moved through earlier this morning. Uh, however, the threat, uh, the threat of tornadoes does appear to be ending as those bands lift north into North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. Now briefly, of the, the storm, because of the, the lack of <coughs> coincidental presence of the high tides and the winds and the rain in the Charleston area, the water did not get as deep as anticipated, although there's still plenty of it. And of course, they're still under the evacuation order. Uh, but now we're turning towards Georgetown and O'Ree County, where it, it seems that although the lower part of the state uh, got off a little lighter than expected, it looks like O'Ree and Georgetown have a, a chance now to do a little harder than was anticipated originally. So. Uh, we are prepared. Uh, as of 3 o'clock today, I'm announcing now that as of 3 o'clock today, the mandatory evacuation order
for three counties will be listed. Those are in the southern part of the state. Those counties, and there are only those three counties out of the eight where it, is, it has been in effect, are Jasper, Buford, and <coughs> Colleton counties only. As of 3 o'clock today, those evacuation orders are lifted, but the decisions about re-entry, where, when, and how, which roads to be careful on, and other such decisions will be, th this decision about 3 o'clock lifting was made in consultation with <coughs> you see here as well as the sheriffs uh, in those counties, that's Jasper County Sheriff Christopher Malfoy, Buford County Sheriff P.J. Town. Colleton Sheriff Andy Strickland as well as, well as other local officials. But they will now be, as of 3 o'clock today, it will be they who will say where and when you can go and what you can do and what is safe and what is not. The evacuation order is lifted as to those three counties starting at 3 o'clock today. Also, the order affects returning school closing. That authority is turned back over to the local authorities. Also, the medical evacuations ordered that is also lifted and turned back over to the local authorities. Also, the nursing homes, the hospitals, or assisted living facilities may open back as they deem appropriate under the direction of the local authorities. But still, the storm is hitting, as I mentioned, Georgetown and Horry counties hard, and the mand uh, mandatory evacuation orders and everything else, schools and so forth, remain in effect on the rest of the eight counties. There's a Ori, Georgetown, Charleston, Berkeley, and Dorchester are still under mandatory evacuation. Schools in those counties will remain closed tomorrow, Friday. The mandatory medical evacuation will also remain in place for those five counties today <coughs> and until further notice. And that is because it's still a very dangerous storm as you know, it's impossible to predict exactly where it's going to go and what's going to happen and where the tides are going to be and how the coincidence level of all those factors. So we are being prepared. In just the last hour, I spoke to Georgetown Mayor Brandon Barber, who said the water on Front Street, this was just before, I guess, around <coughs> noon, was one foot deep on Front Street and getting deeper. The high tide there, we think, will be around four somewhere between 1.30 and 4 o'clock. So that's, uh, that's when the water will be highest there. North Myrtle Beach Mayor Marion Hatley said that in parts of her area, notably up in Crescent Beach and some of those that get to the North Carolina line, it appeared that water was as much as four feet deep on Ocean Boulevard. So that's what's happening in that part of the state. In Buford, it's just the opposite. The flooding is not nearly what they had anticipated. The storm surge and flooding will be bad from Georgetown, Pauley's Island, Merle's Inlet, Garden City, Myrtle Beach, all the way through Cherry Grove, Atlantic Beach, all the way up to the North Carolina line and beyond. And as you know, our friends in North Carolina are, are expecting to, to get a, a very, very strong hurricane there. So again, we urge everybody to stay inside. If you don't need to be out, don't go out. And in this this kind of situation, you don't need to go out, stay off the streets. Uh, it's very dangerous. Now, for those folks who may want to return home in the three counties where the evacuation order has, will be lifted at 3 o'clock in Jasper, Carlton, and Buford counties, be careful and listen to your local authorities. If you don't hear anything from them, call them up and ask them. Or find out what's going on. Also, uh, I want to remind everybody that we have a lot of film, a lot of pictures, a lot of information, a lot of data here, but you can also get a good look by looking at some, some of the, the local reporters and that are out in the areas that show exactly what's going on in various parts of these cities, so do stay informed. But for those going home to Jasper, Carlton, and Beaufort counties, remember it is still a dangerous situation and you must listen to what these local authorities say and take heed. For example, they're down power lines, we know that. There's standing water on some roads, and, and we've had, as you know, we've had tragedies before with people going through standing water, and it turned out the road was gone, they didn't know it. And so you can't see, see through the water sometimes. So be careful. There'll be limbs down. There'll be debris. Uh, don't be surprised if there was water in your home. You might have animals, snakes. Don't know what might be in there, so be very careful as you return. You may still be without power. Uh, uh, General, excuse me. Mayor Brendan Barber said the entire 
The city of Georgetown is without power right now. It was about an hour ago. So you may be without power where you're going back to in those three counties. But the Team South Carolina is, is still working. Uh, here we are. That's why we're here. That's why we, we have troops. We have assets uh, placed in the state. And we'll be concentrating, of course, in reentry in those counties. But we're still battening down the hatches in the other in the other five counties and want everybody to be alert because when the wind stops we still have to deal with the water because the water will last longer and once the water is gone we still have to when we get in and try to evaluate we still have down power lines all kinds of other dangers so please listen to the listen to the local and the state authorities and we'll give you our best estimate of what it's safe to do now we have some visitors with us today we're delighted to have visitors Pete Gaynor is here. He's the acting FEMA administrator, and also Major General Diana Holland from the U.S. Corps of Engineers. I'd like to give them both a chance to speak to you. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Gaynor. Uh, so thank you to the governor and his team uh, for the great work they've done in South Carolina, uh, getting ready uh, for uh, what Hurricane Dorian is bringing. Uh, I had the pleasure to attend the executive group uh, meeting today. Plainly obvious that South Carolina has it well in hand, well organized. Uh, everyone is involved, and it's really a great thing to see. Uh, this is a whole of government effort. Uh, storms like uh, this are locally executed, state managed, and federally supported, uh, representing the federal government through FEMA. Uh, we are ready to support uh, the governor and his team and, any, and anything he may need that exceeds state's capability. Uh, it is imperative that individuals are also prepared. Uh, as Dorian continues to move uh, close to the south uh, coast of uh, uh, South Carolina throughout the day is important to stay vigilant and heed the warnings of your local officials. You heard the governor say it. Uh, you need to really pay attention uh, to what's uh, the risks out there and only return when given the order. Uh, storm surge and flooding bring the greatest danger. Uh, stay out of floodwaters. Turn around. Don't drown. The majority of deaths uh, are people in cars uh, transiting roads uh, when it's not safe, so please be careful. Uh, more than 12,000 federal responders, that, that includes National Guard, uh, FEMA employees and our federal partners and uh, nonprofits and private sector uh, are out there right now ready to support. Uh, and again, should the <coughs> governor need any assistance, we stand ready. Uh, so, Governor, thank you for your hospitality you. today and thank you for the, uh, all the uh, warmth you gave to my staff here and making this a true team effort. Thanks, sir. We're glad you're here. Sir. Major General Diana Holland, Corps of Engineers. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Governor. Uh, on behalf of the Army Corps of Engineers, we're proud to support the state of South Carolina in this emergency. I just want to cover four of our priorities that are ongoing right now. Of course, we're ready to support the state as directed by FEMA. As a Department of Defense entity, uh, we're in close contact with the military installations in the, in the state of South Carolina to provide them any support that may be necessary, whether post-storm assessments or uh, emergency repairs. In support of the U.S. Coast Guard, we will deploy our survey vessels into the federal channels to assist with the decision on when to open the ports. Uh, we are also ready to survey the portions of the, the federal portions of the coastline in order to uh, eventually repair whatever damage has been done to our beaches. Those are just a few of our top priorities. We are ready to support however needed, and we really appreciate the teamwork, Governor. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, General. General Van, <coughs> National Guard. Thank you, Governor. Uh, currently, over 1,400 uh, soldiers, airmen, and members of our State Guard remain deployed in the affected area in response to Hurricane Dorian. Uh, most of those individuals are now are currently sheltered and will remain there until given that it is clear to go forward, and at that time they will support uh, reentry into the affected area. We have debris teams from our engineer units that are in place to help in that, in that mission, and we have over 100 high water vehicles at a position throughout the coastal counties. As we clear the southern conglomerate, we will move those assets as necessary up to the central conglomerate and then on up to the northern to make sure that we meet all the needs there. Uh, in addition to those, we have aircraft that are available to support the state fire marshal in aquatic search and rescue. Uh, we continue to monitor the assets that are available to us through Title X or other <coughs> assets that are in the uh, southeast region and we're preparing for what other missions that may come in response and recovery operations. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, General. Secretary of Transportation, Christy Hall. Thank you, Governor. 
the 2,200 uh, men and women of the South Carolina DOT are currently very much actively engaged in re emergency response and recovery operations in the Beaufort Hilton Head and um, Edisto areas. We've gone in and done our initial assessments with our advanced teams. We've inspected the bridges. The bridges have all checked out fine. We're in the process of doing traffic signal restoration work in some of these areas as required. As the governor and others have mentioned, we're still waiting for the storm to pass by in Charleston, Georgetown, and Myrtle Beach area. And of course, once it's safe to do so, we will get out and conduct our assessment and recovery <coughs> operations, as well as the necessary bridge inspections in those areas. You heard John Q mention the Waccamaw River. We continue our analysis with regards to our infrastructure in that area to try to anticipate what may be coming our way uh, Friday and beyond. And just a few final stats for you. Uh, evacuees, our total number of evacuees is 441,000, which is very, very similar to what we had for Hurricane Florence last year. And on I-26 reversal, our final stats on that, again, taking into account that we started, <coughs> we started the reversal an hour and a half early based on traffic conditions, and we were able to extend it an additional two hours based on the governor's observation on traffic flows for a total of 52 hours in operation. We were able to move 89,000 vehicles on I-26 westbound, and that includes 17,000 vehicles that were on the reverse side of the interstate. I encourage, just like the governor does, to heed the warnings of the local officials, and in particular, if a road is barricaded, do not drive around those barricades and do not move those barricades. They are there for your safety. Thank, Thank you, you, Governor. Thank you, Leroy Smith, on the public safety. Thank you, Governor. Uh, there are no reported storm-related deaths at this time. Uh, once uh, a death is confirmed by the uh, coroner, then we will provide that information uh, to you. I-26 lane reversal ended yesterday. Uh, we, we closed the entry points uh, to the reverse sides at 2 p.m. and at 5.28 p.m. all normal eastbound lanes of I-26 were open. Uh, we are currently assisting SLED and ESF-13 with law enforcement and security missions. We are prepared to assist our partners over at SCDOT with, with any road closures and diversion routes uh, due to flooding if needed. Uh, our troopers and officers will be out patrolling the roads, conducting traffic control missions, looking for downed power lines, tree debris in the roadway, and looking for any other roadway hazards. And as several mentioned before, we want to remind the motor in public, roadway conditions will be dangerous in the impacted areas. Please stay off the roads unless it's absolutely necessary. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. Mark Hill, Chief of Sled. Good afternoon. Uh, as of today, this afternoon, we have over 500 state law enforcement officers along with the National Guard MPs that are continuing to patrol areas that are now uh, being allowed to re-enter. Re uh, they started those patrols at 9.30 this morning in the southern conglomerate, which is Colleton, uh, Jasper, and Beaufort counties. They will continue those patrols as necessary until local officials uh, decide that we can demobilize in those areas. Those personnel will then be uh, moved up the coast coastline as necessary. We have areas that are flooded that we know will be flooded. Uh, in the upper areas of our state, the upper coastline. Uh, those areas too will be patrolled. Uh, we will be working uh, patrolling on our roadways and also in our waterways uh, with DNR. And so uh, we will remain out in force with all of our uh, local jurisdictions, our law enforcement uh, partners. Uh, again, as I've said each day, uh, we will not tolerate any lawlessness. Uh, we will be out in force. And if there are those out there that's trying to take advantage of, of those who have evacuated, left their homes, and may not can get back to them because of flooded areas, uh, if we catch you doing those things that you shouldn't be doing, uh, you will be arrested and you will go to jail. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Rick Timmy, Director of the Department of Health and Environmental Control. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> Currently, over 200 DHEC staff across the state are mobilized for the storm preparation and response efforts. 
We remain in communication with the 175 healthcare facilities that are, have been impacted by the mandatory medical evacuation. More than 150 ambulances were deployed to help facilitate medical evacuations before the storm. And of note, we still have 90 ambulances and 220 paramedics, EMTs, and support staff from across the country, and they're staged here in Columbia on standby to provide additional support if and when needed. We continue to monitor the rainfall amounts. Yesterday, based upon those revised numbers, our dam safety team completed additional pre-storm dam assessments based on the adjusted rainfall amounts. And finally, our Caroline 1855-4SC DHEC, or 1855-472-3432, remains open to answer questions from our patients and women, infant, and children clients. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Michael Leach, Director of the Department of Social Services. Thank you, Governor. Afternoon. At this time, South Carolina has 35 shelters open across the state. Of the 35 shelters that are operating, 32 are general population shelters, and three are medical needs shelters, and we are utilizing 28 <coughs> school buildings. As of 1.20 p.m., we have a total population of 2,484 individuals in all shelters. Uh, the number includes 2,426 general population individuals and 58 medical needs clients. South Carolina currently has 22 <coughs> shelters on standby across the, the state, including four general popu population shelters and 18 medical needs shelters. Our total capacity is 19,439 occupants, and we are presently at 12% of that capacity. As of last evening, Red Cross and the National Guard delivered cots to all our shelters. Any residents deciding to seek shelter are reminded to bring blankets, sleeping bags, pillows, medications, and special foods if you are on a restricted diet. Partner organizations are supplying food and water at all operating shelters. Shelter information can be found at scemd.org. You may also contact the public, public information phone system line at 1-866-246-0133. Shelter staff are available to assist with coordinating accommodations and support for persons with functional and access needs. Some shelters are pet friendly, but all shelters will be prepared to assist evacuees in identifying local resources to care for pets. Pet friendly shelters are located in Charleston, Colleton, Dorchester, Berkeley, and Jasper counties. Some of these may be closing, so check with the shelter before you go. Uh, because DSS County offices located in evacuation zones are closed, we ask the patients of our citizens who experience longer wait times when calling about benefits. We are communicating with the Office of Regulatory Staff to closely monitor the power situation to determine the effects, if any. And our DSS Early Care and Education activated their emergency hotline for child care facilities to report damage, report closures, and request to expand capacity to care for the children from facilities uh, affected by the evacuation. That number is 1-888-825-7174. Thank you very much. Emily Fall, Legal Licensing and Regulation. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> State Fire and its search and rescue partners continue to be ready and prepared to respond as may be needed as this storm passes through South Carolina. Um, again, to emphasize if you need help, please dial 911. Um, the Joint Incident Support Team, which consists of South Carolina's Palmetto Incident Support Team, Louisiana's Advanced Incident Support Team, and then FEMA's Urban Search and Rescue Red IS, uh, Incident Support Team, are all coordinating resources spread across the coastal areas to respond as may be needed. Um, as mentioned yesterday, South Carolina has a number of swift water rescue and urban search and rescue teams positioned within the coastal communities and also positioned outside of those communities to respond where they may be needed. Um, and also we still have the FEMA Urban Search and Rescue and Swift Water Rescue teams stationed at Fort Jackson to assist. Um, not counting the rescuers that are already working within their own jurisdiction, we have a total of 326 rescuers out there in South Carolina ready to help as needed. Um, I did want to emphasize as well as these power outages spread and may be prolonged, 
um, wanted to emphasize what was mentioned yesterday about being safe in trying to provide power um, to yourself when the power outage occurs. Um, avoiding using candles and open flames. Use flashlights with batteries instead to the extent possible. Remember not to um, use generators inside. Don't even use them inside an attached garage if the door is open. Make sure those generators are outside and away from doors and windows um, where that, those exhaust fumes might enter your home. Also don't refuel those generators while they are running. Make sure that they are off and cool before you do so. And also just a note for, for the utility workers that will be out there working hard, if you use a generator, make sure to turn off the main breaker um, to your home. That way when the electricity is restored, there won't be a chance of electricity going back onto the power lines and potentially urging, uh, injuring a utility worker. Uh, so just a reminder about that as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ray Farmer, Department of Insurance. Thank you, Governor. Um, as the storm passes by and uh, people return to their, their homes and discover there's some damages um, to their homes, you need to know that the insurance companies are currently staged in a safe spot. They're ready to come in and assess and adjust the claims as, as, uh, uh, as soon as it's safe to do so. We have allowed um, companies to bring in extra emergency adjusters if need be to supplement our, our core adjusting uh, uh, staff already in, in place in, in the state. Uh, if you have any questions or need to find out what your insurance company's phone number is, uh, go to our website. We have a list of all the uh, phone companies of all the companies at doi.sc.gov. Governor, unfortunately, uh, these events we've seen at, over the last four or five years have brought out the best in, in people, but they sometimes bring out the worst in people. So when you return to your homes and you need a contractor, be aware of people that want to take advantage of you and scam partners. Uh, just a few tips to, to follow. Make sure you're doing business with somebody you know as best you can. Make sure they have a contractor's license. Check. Um, for, for their license. Don't pay up front for any damages or any repairs that uh, um, they're about to do. Check their references. Uh, check to make sure they have liability insurance. And then uh, check with your local Better Business Bureau. If you see someone that uh, is committing some fraudulent act, please report that to the Insurance Fraud Bureau at the Attorney General's office. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, sir. Kim Stinson. Director. Thank you, sir. Emergency management. Our uh, priorities here at the State Emergency Operations Center have not really changed that much since yesterday, but we've got uh, certainly moving to initial response operations and with a particular emphasis on the communications piece, uh, transportation, and then also energy restoration. Uh, at the same time, we're also either implementing or planning for uh, re-entry and then also for recovery. I can give you some information right now in terms of uh, uh, what's going on at the local level. Uh, we've got 25 counties that are still at some level of operation here in South Carolina. Uh, six of them are at OPCON 2, which is our second highest radius level, and then 19 of them are at OPCON 1, which is the highest greatest level, and that's operating condition. Their primary focus is similar to ours, uh, sheltering operations, initial response, damage assessment, and re-entry. Uh, I'm happy to report that we have excellent communications uh, with all systems uh, with our county emergency manager partners at the local level. Uh, in terms of residential and business damages, uh, right now there's very few structural or residential or business damages that have been reported to us. Uh, there are a few, but this is still very early in the process. Uh, the storm is still ongoing, uh, and we expect many of the counties to be able to field their damage assessment teams uh, sometime tomorrow. Uh, but that being said, all coastal counties are reporting uh, power outages, block roads, and localized flooding. Uh, at least three EOCs uh, in Dorchester, Georgetown, and Ori went to generator power at one time or another. I believe Dorchester is up right now, but that kind of is a moving target there. Uh, and then there was a number of lift stations uh, in uh, Dorchester County uh, that were also non-operational for a period of time, but most of them have been restored. There have been sporadic uh, cell phone outages along the, the coast, but uh, 
it's nothing that we would really uh, qualify or classify as uh, significant. Uh, and right now we have no uh, specific infrastructure uh, damages to report, but uh, quite frankly at this point, again, we're not hearing too much in, in, in terms of that. Uh, county government uh, closures, uh, there's right now 23 of them, counties that have closures for the county government, and that's mostly from the middle and south, and a similar uh, set of circumstances for the school uh, closures as well. Uh, but there's only, uh, well, there's actually 27 uh, counties that have school closures. <coughs> Uh, we continue to work requests from the local authorities. We've got right now about 400 we've received to date. Uh, we've actioned out uh, in terms of completion or in progress of about 310 of them, and then we've got, I guess, about another 90 or so that are being actioned right now. Uh, and again, those requests range from cots to sandbags to high water vehicles to law enforcement support uh, to ambulances, so it's pretty much across the board. Uh, and then the last thing I'll mention, again, it's already been mentioned a couple times before, but Stay connected through our website at scemd.org. There's a wealth of information there to keep you up to date on what's going on in a disaster. And then also our uh, state hotline, the public information phone system, uh, that is uh, still operational. If you've got any questions on anything to do with this operation, you can call that number, and that's at 1-866-246-0133. Uh, and uh, we do have Spanish interpreters that are available for that. And so far, we've, uh, the group there has answered uh, almost 4,500 calls from citizens here in the last, uh, I guess, three days now. So, sir? Thank you. Are there any questions? Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, fortunately, you know, uh, <coughs> I haven't had any um, deaths in the state, but wondering about uh, evacuations. People need to be rescued um, either from uh, vehicles being in the water or anything along those lines. Rescue? Yep. None that we know of yet. We have to wait in a lot of ways for the storm to pass before they can come in um, to assist. So none at this time. Um, are there any kind of particular areas where you're thinking that that will be needed or where you're kind of focusing those efforts? Well, so we've got swift water teams in uh, North Charleston and the city of Charleston, um, some in Horry County. We also have them stationed back in, in Manning and Fort Jackson and Columbia so that they can be deployed wherever we might need it as the storm continues to move north. Um, I know it's early, but I gotta ask. So when, when might uh, people be able to return any estimation for the other five counties? You are correct, it's early. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we know you will know. Uh, as you can gather, it, there's a lot of thought and a lot of data that needs to be analyzed and a lot of conversations need to be held to make those decisions, but we did make them uh, this morning after extensive communications and an analyzing with uh, the three counties I mentioned. Any idea how many road closures we have? So we still have uh, roads covered with water in the Georgetown area, Myrtle Beach, North Myrtle Beach area. So our data that, that we're reporting uh, is not fully up to date just because it is this, we're literally still in the storm within those regions. So, um, you know, those areas are still under an evacuation order and uh, as, as everybody else has mentioned, we definitely are not encouraging travel in those areas and obviously follow any kind of uh, direction of law, local law enforcement if you do happen to venture out. More questions? Yes, sir. Any idea of how many people are without power at this point? Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Um, as this, um, at 1 o'clock today, uh, we had 252,000. But just before this briefing began, uh, it was reported to me that we were down to 247,000. That number will fluctuate. And those are people or homes? Those are um, meters. So you can presume, uh, I believe, two, two people, two people per home, um, generally speaking. So, um, but those were meters. And then, Governor, I know you also talked about kind of the focus now, Ori and Georgetown counties. Um, you've talked about it throughout the week, but now that it's actually here, what's your message to the people who have decided to hunker down in those counties? Well, it's the same as it has been all along, and I mean, we're still concentrating on Beaufort and Jasper. We have a lot of work to do there. It's just a different kind of work now. But um, we'd urge everybody to stay inside, as you can you can see 
from uh, images that we're receiving from uh, cameras all over the place. The winds are blowing, the waters are getting deeper in Georgia. I'd be interested to see what it is in, in Georgetown in, a, in an hour or so. But on up the coast is where we, we still have uh, high winds and a whole lot of water. So if, if you have not left in those areas, if you, if you left from other areas, or if, you, if you, you're still there, be careful. But uh, if those that will be coming back in starting at 3 o'clock, if the local authorities allow them to come back in, be careful. Those who are, as you say, hunkered down in Ori, Georgetown, or anywhere else, be careful. And, and particularly there, don't go outside. Things are flying around in the air. The water's getting deeper. It's uh, dangerous. And uh, so far, we, as far as we know, we've had no storm-related deaths, and we want to keep it that way. Because we can rebuild a building, but you can't start a life all over again. So we want the people to be careful. That's why we're here. What's the recovery response going to look like? Is it going to have the folks that you, we've had emergency responders here in the Midlands, are they going to be diverted to help clear that up, especially given that it seems that we're kind of out of the, out from under the gun? Right. Well, well, we'll work the recovery process as we go through the damage assessment process and see where we need to go in terms of either infrastructure or residential uh, you know, repairs and that sort of thing. So we'll go through that process. We'll work, work very closely with uh, FEMA on that uh, in terms of f possible federal reimbursements. So does that kind of answer your question? Well, I was also more just a bit wondering if, if it's more along the lines of are you sending any of the emergency personnel, like she was saying, we have folks who are mobilized here, like Fort Jackson, send them kind of down along the way to sort of help with that response. Oh, okay, absolutely. I'm sure that's going to happen. We receive some assets from the South ourselves here. And I'm sure that will happen uh, as, the, as, the, as the process moves forward. And I don't know if either you two have anything about the response down there coming up here, but that this pretty much makes sense, I think. Yes, process forward. in motion. Yeah, process in motion. In the counties where the evacuation is lifted, are those governments expected to reopen? Anytime yes. Soon? Okay. That will be up to them. Okay. Is there any damage specific to the two confirmed tornadoes, or is it too early to tell? Is there, is there any damage been reported from the tornadoes that were confirmed? There have been some tornadoes reported. I don't think we've had any estimate as to the damage. we got some very preliminary. Very preliminary. Yeah, just right now what we've got is just some houses damaged, I think some roofs damaged, but um, the, the problem up there right now, the, we've still got tropical storm force winds up there and getting out and looking at those things, so it's uh, we don't have complete information right now. And can you just re-say where those tornadoes were confirmed? I uh, believe they're in North Myrtle Beach and Little North Myrtle Beach and Little River. <laughs> With regard to the, the power outages, um, any kind of sense or idea as to how long restoration efforts could take and maybe what's kind of hamper, hampering that? I know we've got the high winds going on. It's too soon to, to be able to say. Um, the utilities are going to have to have the opportunity to go out and do an assessment of the damage. And, um, you know, it, it depends on how quickly the storm moves out, um, whether or not, for example, whether or not Dominion could go out this afternoon in Charleston and start assessing damage. Um, so, unfortunately, it's too soon to start saying that. Um, and I think you had a compound question. Did I answer it fully? Uh, I, I was wondering about what is, might be hampering those efforts. Obviously, we've got the, the strong winds. I, the <coughs> utility trucks will only roll if they are above 35 miles, I mean, below 35 miles per hour wind. So what they'll do is if there's a band of wind, they'll, they'll roll, roll trucks out now where there's openings, and they are restoring service, which is why you saw the numbers fluctuate. They are out there restoring service where, when and where they can and do so safely. But when the wind goes above 35 miles per hour, um, they, they will not roll. How yes, much longer are we expecting to see the rains and the winds associated with this in the state? And then after that point, once it clears out, what is the biggest concern for our residents? Sure, we're already seeing improving conditions in the southern part of the state. Uh, the tropical storm force winds are lifting north of there now. We still do have some tropical storm force wind gusts in the Charleston metropolitan area and then obviously up uh, farther north along the coast. But we expect gradual improvement through the day. So. Uh, probably by this evening, we'll see the tropical storm force winds lifting out of the Charleston metropolitan area. And then sometime overnight tonight, we believe all the tropical storm force winds will be out of the state and we'll be seeing improving conditions for tomorrow. 
Any more questions? Governor, yes, yes sir. For the people that are allowed to re-enter those three counties, other than the local media, how else can they find out from officials? They can, they can speak to their local officials who are, who are prepared to do that. And they are, that's their function. They are all standing up uh, in all of these counties. There's an army of people to provide that information. Uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Any concerns for the rivers here locally yeah, when the water that's coming down? Right now, the only concern we have uh, for major flooding is on the Waccamaw River. We have no concerns here in the Midlands. Uh, other rivers along the coast might reach minor or at worst moderate flood stage, but the river we're most concerned with right now is the Waccamaw River for any kind of significant flooding. Did you have another? It was actually not. Yeah, okay. <laughs> is there, now that I mean, it's not gone completely, but I guess it's halfway gone, um, is there any relief that it hasn't been worse than it is? Yes. Uh, we were, this time yesterday, we were looking for a lot more water than we had in Charleston, for example. Charleston is low and it's a big city right on, on the water. But uh, because the high tide and the, the wind and the, uh, the rain did not all happen in the same, in different directions at the same time, we were spared several feet of water uh, in the streets of Charleston, although we, uh, we, we had a lot, but we didn't have what could have happened. Now, it looks like it may be deeper in Georgetown and on up the coast uh, than had been expected a couple of days ago. But that's the way hurricanes work. You always just, and that's why I would say be prepared. That's the main thing you can do. Is that uh, the unexpected nature of how it's deeper farther up the coast? Has that affected, uh, has it made it worse for them or rather do you, were they not prepared enough? And no, they, no like they were prepared. Uh, they were prepared. We were prepared. Everybody's prepared. This is the fifth year in a row. We've had something uh, happen. So we, we, people, except the visitors here, the uh, who come in to, to vacation, everyone in the state is thoroughly familiar with how hurricanes and floods and storms work. Do you have any idea on that front how it's impacted tourism for this week since you had that evacuation starting in, now on Labor Day? Well, we have, of course, a lot of a lot of tourists uh, leave on Labor Day uh, anyway. That's when the vacations are over. But. We, of course, because of a hurricane coming in, we expect that accelerated those leaves. Any more questions? Thank you very much.